Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Shalom, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebaikan. Dan Honorable Insinyur Igusti Bagus Budi Dharma, STM Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi IPM. wabarakatuh. Shalom, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebaikan. Dan Honorable Insinyur Igusti Bagus Budi Dharma, STM Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi IPM. wabarakatuh. Shalom, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebaikan. Dan honorable insinyur Igusti Bagus Budi Dharma, STM Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
ಕೆಲಸ Thank you. Please be seated. Uh, I'm sorry. Can please stand again please because be we seated. want to play the hymn of Gajah Mada. You know. I'm sorry. Can please stand again because we want to play the hymn of Check one two three. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
Salam sejahtera, salam Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya. Uh, good morning everyone and Thank welcome so to the final. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's like echo. Salam sejahtera, salam Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya. Uh, good morning everyone and Thank welcome so Actually, we want to attract number of students, especially the postgraduate students, willing to share their works, their research, in a attractive, informative, and entertaining manner. Actually, <laughs> so for the participant, we hope that you can then understand what your friend are doing, what the institution or laboratory or even your lecturer doing by their presentation and so i'm very happy to see many of you join with us in this room and also maybe in the online meeting uh, a special welcome to the all the judges today uh, dr titis wijayanto dr ahmad pratama rifai and also warm welcome also all the audience in the online meeting so the three minute thesis competition actually founded by the MC of Queensland, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in the 2008. Uh, it has grown a lot uh, from the maybe for uh, only a small event their university now become the international competition held by many universities around the world, now including us today. So um, the rule is very simple. Students have three minutes to present their works. And uh, you have to present uh, one again in very attractive way to the non-specialist audience, to, to the general public audience, actually. So the, it challenges the student how to consolidate the idea, the finding, and everything in the presentation very concisely. So uh, it's not easy. <laughs> not easy. So we have 13 students participate for year, this year event, and uh, we have selected from the into six finalists. Actually, the organizer asked the judges to pick top five, but the score is very tight. And even they are two participants, the score is same. So we asked the organizer to put one more finalist. So now today we will see six finalists for this final. So before uh, the last part on the list, I would like to thank too many people today, all the board of director for uh, Department of Mechanical and Industrial Engineering all, and uh, all the staff the board director of the industrial ring master program. And also I give a high acknowledge to, for the hard work, phenomenal work for organizer, for the student postgraduate student organization and the committee today. Thank you for all your support. To the, all the participants, I would like to say happy competing and all the audience I would like to say, please enjoy the show. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Igusti Bagus Budi Dharma for the greeting. Before we are going to the presentation session, let me read to you the rule for finalists and audience. First, rule for finalists, 
One presentation and Q&A are required to be in English. Two, each participant will be given three minutes of presentation time followed by three minutes of question and answer from judges. Three, the timer will be start with the first spoken word. Four, the winner will be determined through the judges' assessment and decision as absolute. Second, rule for audience. When audience are expected to maintain silence during the presentation to not disturb other finalists and audience, two, cell phone and gadgets must be in silent mode and vibrate mode during the event. Three, audience is not given the right to ask questions to the finalists, question only from the judges. Four, audience must be respect the rules and decision made by the event committee. Now we are going to the mention from this event, presentation from all finalists. Let us begin with the first finalist to present his thesis draft. Please welcome Mr. Rifki Fauzi on stage with the thesis title. With the thesis draft title, Joint Optimization for Combined Production Maintenance with Quality Control of Manufacturing System Considering Reliability Level. Please for Mr. Okay, for all the students who plans graduate uh, on time, maybe in time, maybe in time in the past result. Yeah, I think that every student want to that uh, dream, right? Uh, but imagine that we want a goal, but there are so many obstacles, so many unexpected problems, so many distractions. So uh, is it annoying, right? Yes. Uh, for this uh, simple analogy, we can uh, bring the manufacturing system. As we know that manufacturing system has aims to increase the profit and also reduce the operational costs. Okay. If we are talking about operational costs, there are so many factors that influence the fluctuation of itself. But we will focus on three important aspects. Yeah. The first one is production and then maintenance, also quality control. They are have so, so many different interests, but often defending interests each other in if will rise uh in direct conflict, yeah, which can increase the overall cost, which can increase the effort of the manufacturing. So here, uh, we, what should we do to uh, solve the indirect conflict? Yeah, as in the screen, we can show that uh, the production scheduling, the good scheduling, influenced by the cost production output, and also. Uh, influence the deterioration of the system, deterioration of the equipment, and it influenced the reliability, the quality degradation, and also the maintenance tasks. All of them actually can disturb the production scheduling. Uh, as a result, yeah, we have to create a method that can uh, decision simultaneously for all of that a uh, problem for example for the product sequence and then for predictive maintenance and also for quality parameters as for your information that in 2018 there are uh, previous research show that uh, integrated model can increase uh, until saving cost until 20 percent that's all thing Okay, uh, thank you very much for your very interesting presentation, uh, Mas Rifki. Yeah, uh, so you combine production, maintenance, also quality control. Right? Uh, the combination between production and maintenance have been explored 
widely in the previous literature, but uh, here you also include quality control aspects. So how do you uh, integrate uh, quality control out with the uh, production scheduling and also maintenance scheduling? Thanks for the question, because as we know, the reliability level is influenced not only from the uh, deterioration of the system, but also the quality of uh, the pro output product. So we can uh, consider the reliability from the quality control um, in uh, in control and of and also out of control chart in between uh, production output. So we can use that parameter to uh, calculate the reliability. So we can combine all of the aspect. We can combine the product production. We can combine the maintenance and also quality uh, output to uh, create a good scheduling. Okay, thank you. And also uh, because your problem is optimization problem. So I assume that you consider uh, many things like production maintenance and quality control. And as uh, if as I know that uh, maybe uh, the objective are uh, conflicting between each other. So what kind of objective you use for uh, your optimization model? Yes, the first one, uh, the objective function of this uh, optimization is to minimize the total operational cost with the decision variable, uh, product sequence, and then predictive maintenance, and also quality parameter. Oh, so only one, one objective? Yes, one objective. So how you include the quality control aspect in your model? Uh, I input the quality control because quality control is have life cycle of the quality. So we can uh, put the life cycle of the quality with the objective function. Okay. Yeah. And one more question from me. Uh, in kind in the, what kind of industry that uh, your the problem that you concern in your study can be found? Yeah. Based on uh, my observation, uh, I, we can apply this uh, model to the flow shop manufacturing system and also uh, we can use uh, in manufacturing that can uh, implement that make to order system, make to stock system, sorry. Thank you. Thank you for Mr. Rifki Fauzi for the presentation. Now, please welcome to the second finalist, Mr. Muhammad Nur Duja al -Kautzer, on stage with the thesis draft title, Influence of Kawaii Design Element on User Retention and Forecasting Behavior in Mobile Games. Please for Mr. Nur Duja. Uh, hello everyone, I'm here to talk about my research on kawaii design in mobile games. Kawaii is a term in the Japanese meaning cute or adorable and it's very popular around the world. I'm going to focus on three main things. The first one is the background research, the approach I'm going to use, and the conclusion I am hope to achieve. Let's just start with the background. The gaming industry is expected to grow to 300 billion US dollar by 2028. That's a huge number. And the Kawaii design has played a significant role on this growth. This design, characterized by a color, bright color, round shapes, and the warm feeling that evoke from its design. I'm planning to investigate how this design influences the user behavior, especially on user retention and purchasing behavior on mobile games. Uh, now about my approach. My approach is quite straightforward. Uh, I'll, I'll identify characters from uh, well-known mobile games uh, for their kawaii design aspect. 
uh, identify their you know uh, their color, their shapes, their texture. Conduct a survey. Just that simple. I'll identify characters and I'll conduct a survey. Uh, from this survey, I want to know whether this design uh, have any significant uh, influence on whether they want to play the game more, whether they have fun, or whether they lead to players uh, purchasing in-game app in the game. So in summary, it's just that three simple steps. The first one is identifying the characters uh, for the kawaii design. And the second one is uh, conduct a, surf a survey uh, for this kawaii design to know the uh, player feelings and player behavior. And the last one uh, to conduct uh, our to see to hope that I hope to see uh, this design influence the uh, player behavior. I think that's all. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for a very interesting presentation by Mr. Muhammad Nuruja Al Kausar. Okay. Um. I want to uh, ask about the uh, constraint or the scope of your research. Actually, it's very interesting because kawaii is from the Japanese word. So it means yeah. that uh, due to constrain your character uh, based on the Japanese character or any any uh, country anything, based character. Uh, anything that fits the kawaii design itself, mm. like. It has the bright color, the uh, certain shape, the round shapes, or uh, or thin texture. Uh, because uh, I saw your, your your slide is is Japanese character. Yeah, a bit so that big people... eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Even it's... though the Japanese is not doesn't have the big eyes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, or anything. So, yeah. uh, is it include the human character or animal character, or you can combine it? Yeah, animal also. Uh, animal that here. Yeah, animal also. As well, yeah, uh, human and animal, yep, uh, or both. I mean, so you can, uh, do you want to put the logical? I mean, or free, free. I mean, in the game character, there are some like uh, mutant characters. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so all, yeah. So anything. So as long as a characters. So uh, one thing that I want to spread here is, uh. The kawaii design is often implement, implemented on two things, the UI itself and the character itself. So as long as it's characters, it works on it. What about the genre, the genre of the game? For example, uh, I believe that we cannot put the kawaii character in the fire suit yeah, yeah, or so. the wall. Uh, the genre itself. Uh, to be honest, I... I uh you know uh it it based on the top grossing apps in the app store actually so the top 10 uh grossing app store i'm going to uh take the character from it and then conduct the the analysis on the kawaii design so what did the example of him can you mention uh, it uh like Genshin impact for example Genshin impact yeah <laughs> yeah Okay, I think it's enough. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much you, for the explanation. Thank you. Okay, it's very unique for the title and the presenter very cheerful. Okay, we move to the next finalist. Please welcome the third finalist, Mr. Jakey, on stage with the Tasis Draft title, Kola Supply Chain of Palm Industry Ways. Please, for Mr. Jakey. Greetings to the honorable judges and to everyone. It is not a secret anymore that Indonesia is one of the leading palm oil producers all around the world. But how do we know that from this process of palm fruits into palm oil, there are tons of waste being produced. 
But and what are the usual things that palm industry do regarding this waste? They dispose it. Now that's a lot of this advantages comes from this disposal activities. Firstly, for the industry itself, they will have an extra expenditures because of this disposal cost. And some of these ways have a serious impact on the environment. So it's not good for the environment. So instead of disposing these ways, why don't we think in firstly, some of the ways are not meant to be disposed. Some of them are still useful enough that they can be processed further and be made into some things that have extra added value. Based on my research, all of these ways have still high nutrition contains inside of them so they can be processed and then made into raw materials for lots of industries, so just like animal feed industry and also for fertilizer industry. So based on these problems, my research objective is to propose, propose the mathematical models that can represent these waste supply chains. And also for the objective functions of these mathematical models is to make, minimize the amount of waste being disposed while maximizing the profit that the industry can gain from this waste supply chain. So from the proposed supply chains pathway that have been included in the presentations, we can see that each waste can be treated separately and individually, which later on, they can be sent into various variety of industry as raw materials and also as actives. Such as like uh, for the empty palm bunch, they can be sent into the crusher facilities and then made into powder, which later on they can be sent to the animal feed industry and also uh, to the fertilizer industry as raw materials. For the palm kernel shell, they can be they can be used directly as fuels. For the palm in the, uh, for multi multiple uh, variety of industry, including the palm milling facility itself. For palm kernel meal and palm oil meal effluents, they can be sent into a uh, chemical extractions industry. And then which later on they can uh, they can be separated and used as tips and also raw materials for uh, animal feed industry and also for the fertilizer industry. So based on my research, it is expected that from this uh, proposed supply chains, it is expected that we can get a step further to make an impact on sustainability, especially in the palm oil industry. So that's all from me. Th thank you for your attention. Check, check. <clears throat> okay, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, as you know, that palm industry is one of issue in Indonesia, not only about the product itself, but also the waste, right? Yeah. So, my question is um, you plan to propose a mat mathematical model, right? Yeah. So, what was the constraint for uh, this model? Okay. At first? And the second one is um, uh, what are the economic costs that we will be? be uh, the boundary or maybe not, not the boundary, but uh, the limitation that should be included in the models. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for your question, sir. And uh, of course, if we see, if we see the geolo geological uh, property of Indonesia, uh, lots of palm industry is uh, located in the like remote area. Yeah. So uh, not, not all of those industries are close to so like uh the other industry itself. Mm -hmm. So firstly, the constraint is uh how close they are to the to the other industry, and also uh what what are the costs for those transportations? That's the main uh limitations that we have to include in these mathematical models, mm -hmm. and also the investments that uh the industry have to make to, uh research also and also to have uh developments of how they can they can treat this waste. So uh, basically for up to this stage, th those are the limitations that I can think of uh, as the boundaries and also as the limitations for this uh, mathematical model that will be proposed, sir. Okay. And uh, you have objective to minimize the waste. Yeah. What is the KPA? What is, of, what is the key, uh, key performance indicator that uh, your model will be useful to minimize the waste? uh obtained from the palm industry okay sir so uh basically uh as we all know that for uh for the for the waste itself there are 25 tons of waste annually being produced by this palm uh, oil industry 
So if we take an account of uh, minimizing the waste around like 10% or 50% is already a great start for the palm oil industry itself. And later on, they can develop uh, more various methods and more various pathway they can, that they can uh, facilitate to uh, reduce more and more waste uh, for this palm industry waste. So for me, firstly, for 15% uh, is already a good start. And then later on, it can develop uh, further and further for bigger waste reductions like that. Okay, I think that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for Mr. Jakey, really prepared for the presentation. And can our answer all questions as well as we know so good. Okay. <laughs> we next to the four finalists. Welcome. Mr. Muhammad Ali Fatoni on stage with the thesis draft title Acceptance and Compliance Level Analysis of Energy Management System Program Using Cognitive Mapping and Ergonomic Gamification. Please, for Mr. Ali. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I would like to share my uh, research about Cognitive economic. Uh, before I jump to the detailed explanation, I will uh, share about the uh, research background. If we go back to uh, 2016 in Paris Agreement, uh, all of participants uh, had a commitment to reduce greenhouse gas emission, including Indonesia. Indonesia also uh, has a commitment to reduce 29% of green has, uh, greenhouse gas emission compared to uh, business as usual in 2030. Uh, respond this uh, a commitment, uh, since 2019, uh, the government of Indonesia has edited and uh, made a policy and regulation to the industrial sector, such as the limitation of uh, energy consumption use for industrial sector, uh, before it's 6,000 to 4,000 TOA, ton of oil equivalent. And then the second is uh, the implementation of carbon trade and carbon tax in 2025 for industrial sector. So, uh, respond to uh, government regulation, uh, industrial sector must uh, assess uh, the performance of energy consumption. If their energy consumption is uh, greater than the standard, so must conduct the energy management system, uh, which uh, regulated by ISO 50001. Uh, in the ISO 50001, there are uh, some clauses that guide the user to uh, manage the energy properly. So uh, the user uh, must make a policy and program to improve uh, their compliance to ISO 50001. Actually, uh, this compliance can uh, be measured by uh, three variables. The first is acceptance, uh, participatory, and awareness. Uh, if we know that the third of them uh, are a cognitive scope, which is uh, difficult to measure and uh, clearly see the result. So in this uh, research, I use two kinds of tools or methods. Uh, the first one is cognitive mapping for decision analysis. And the second one is economic gamification for making strategy to improve or push uh, the effect or uh, of the goal. And then at the end of the research, uh, we hope that there is increasing in standard compliance and uh, also uh, reducing in energy consumption. Uh, I think that's all for me. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your very interesting uh, presentation, Mr. Ali. Uh, so first, my question is, what is the current existing condition of acceptance and compliance level uh, of energy management system program in the existing condition right now. Uh, thank you. Uh, actually, uh, I uh, take this problem uh, in uh, my work uh, for the acceptance and uh, compliance uh, for the energy management system actually is uh, low because uh, I uh, in our uh, industry start from uh, in 20, 2020 to conduct this energy management system. And then uh, this 
uh, this system or this program very very cognitive scope that we must uh, deal with uh, employee deal with the uh, uh, person so the acceptance and compliance still it's low very, very low yeah okay thank you and here you use two kind of methods cognitive mapping and ergonomics uh, gamification do you combine this uh, two methods or you uh, make like two separate proposed method uh, using each cognitive mapping and uh, economics gamification okay uh, in this research i make it uh, separately uh, the the first or uh, we use a uh, cognitive mapping to uh, all of variable all uh, or all of, uh, the the things that uh, maybe uh, can uh, make the compliance uh, increasing and then after we know the the variable and then uh, the uh, maybe the parameter but to to make the variable is uh, can make impact uh, we use economic gamification as we know that economic gamification is um, uh, bring the game situation into the real life situation this is the strategy to make the cognitive uh, scope uh, can be uh, improving in the uh, under the result Okay, and one more question maybe from me. Uh, what are the key indicators of the proposed solution? So after you uh, propose solution, then you need to test, right? And then you need to make an uh, experiment. What are the key indicators that your proposed solution can increase the acceptance and compliance level of uh, energy management system? Uh, for the key is there is a three the three variable that I will be measure. The first is for uh, acceptance, participatory, and awareness. Uh, the third of them uh, becoming the ones uh, variable that uh, standard compliance. And from com uh, standard compliance, I will uh, check whether uh, the impact of the reducing of energy consumption. The the main goal actually is energy reducing energy consumption by uh, increasing standard compliance. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to Mr. Ali Fatoni. Okay, we're moving to the fifth finalist. Please welcome to Mr. Muhammad Ayub on stage with the thesis draft title, The Use of Body Cooling and Its Effect on Psychological Response and Subjective Perception of Human Working in Construction Area. Please for Mr. Ali. Uh, good morning. My name is Ayub. Uh, as we know that the Earth's temperature is very hot currently. According to Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, uh, the global temperature has risen by over 1.1 degrees Celsius since 1850s and is expected to rise by over 1.5 degrees Celsius by 2040. Global warming has an impact on hot weather that and hot weather that uh, occurs in many areas, especially in America, in Africa, and also in Southeast Asia. Hot weather can be dangerous for humans, especially for those who work in area which they are exposed di directly to heat, uh, can result in heat stress. Uh, in mild condition, heat stress can cause such as dizziness or fatigue. But in extreme condition, uh, uh, heat stress can make the people feel like uh, heat exhaustion, like uh, heat cramps, or even heat stroke, which result in death. Other workers, like construction workers, uh, face extremely dangerous situation since they work in a hot environment with poor ventilation while also performing a heavy workload and uh, working in a long period of time. Um, basically, a uh, hot temperature is a hazard that cannot be substituted or eliminated. Therefore, personal hazard control in the form of body cooling is the most practical option. Body cooling is uh, act, is an active body is an active cooling method that aims to keep body core temperature steady. The, actually, there are so many kind of body cooling. Uh, however, uh, body cooling for construction worker must be made as feasible as possible and need to consider 
the logistic side since a uh, structure worker has a limited facilities and also a strict working time. So the goal of my research is to analyze all sorry sorry I'm sorry uh, by considering by considering that condition uh, cold water consumption uh, forum immersion and wet towel is the most practical option for construction worker since it is simple to set up and also easy to use. So the goal of my research is to analyze all that three body cooling and to find which one is the best uh, for construction worker to minimize the heat strain level and also to uh, limit the heat strain. I think that's all. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, very nice presentation uh, by Mr. Matayuk. Uh, uh, can you elaborate again about the type of body cooling that we will use in this uh, research? Okay, uh, thank you very much for the question. So in this research, are kind of body cooling. The first one is the cold water consumption. It means that uh, the worker or the subject will uh, drink the cold water. The cold water, by the reference, is on the 10 degrees Celsius. And then forearm immersion. Forearm immersion is when the forearm of the worker uh, immerse in the water with the uh, forearm is mistaken, 20x degrees Celsius. And the last is wet towel. Wet towel is uh, to take the for the for worker in in the trunk, in the uh, uh, neck, and also in the thigh, like that. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. So it means that the 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 worker have do some treatment. Yes. Uh. Before before the before they walking before before they're... and after before they after. Oh, that's one that's one I want to ask. So what what the, the treatment that the work the worker have to that you that you will that you propose for the worker, what is the, the treatment actually okay uh, uh in the experiment uh so there is a pre cooling and post cooling for the pre cooling the before the exercise the worker need to use uh, all the three body cooling uh, one one of the three body cooling and and then uh, the worker is uh, doing the job and then uh uh doing a recovery one the recovery one is using this body cooling again and then doing the job again and then uh, reco recovery two the recovery two is doing this body cooling again like that so pre cooling and post cooling and for the physiological response what kind of the response that we will measure okay for the measurement of physical physiological response uh, there are three kind of uh, measurement the first is stretch the second one is the uh, core temperature lead by the timpani temperature sensor and the last one is the skin temperature lead by in the egg, egg point in the body like that okay i think it's enough for me thank you very okay, much thank you very much Thank you for Mr. Ayu for the presentation. Following finalist and the last presentation, please welcome to the sixth finalist, Mr. Dodi Rahmat on stage with the thesis draft title, Formulation and Analysis of Brighton Batik Wax Quality from Recycled Material. Please for Mr. Jodi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Uh, good morning. I will explain about handwritten batik wax from recycled material. The making process of uh, batik consists of three processes, uh, batik processes, coloring, and wax removing. Have you heard about malam or the wax? The wax serves as a resist material during the batik process. The primary raw material used for making batik wax consists of uh, six materials, uh, the first one is beeswax, uh, paraffin, microwax, gondorukum or coloponium resin, damar resin, and kendal or animal fat. The alternative raw material used for making batik wax are used cooking oil and used wax. 
However, the proposal of use cooking oil can pose health and environmental risks. On the other hand, use cooking oil has the potential to be an alternative for making batik wax. Using used wax is a form of recycle in the batik industry. This research aims to identify the optimal composition of recycled wax and compare the quality of recycled wax with the new wax. The method used in this research combine Taguchi method and gray relational analysis to obtain the value continuity of width and wax penetration and the raw material used for this research are uh, paraffin, microwax, coloponium resin, dama resin, used wax, and used cooking oil. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the recycled wax and new wax is applied to mori fabric and compare based on batik quality criteria, including wax penetration, line width, uh, flowing result quality, overall assessment, artistic value. The research indicates that the optimal composition of recycled wax consists of the paraffin 9.8%, microwax 6.8%, Colopinium resin 24.4%, Dama resin 14.6%, and use wax 41.5%, and use cooking oil 2.9%. According to Batik Expert Assessment, the recycled wax, the recycled wax quality is equivalent to the new wax. Therefore, use use cooking oil and use wax to produce recycled wax can contribute to use environmental pollution. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very interesting uh, presentation. Um, so uh, you're going to do research about uh, uh, creating the material for batik wax, right? Mm, yes. So uh, you mentioned here that paraffin 98%, micro wax and so on. And how can you get, how did you obtain the proportion of uh, each raw materials used for the batik wax is it based on your research or yes, based on my research okay so um is it the optimum one yes the optimal one uh, can you explain about the uh the of experiment that you did for before obtaining these parameters oh yes uh, the first ones we do uh, some uh, literature review uh, there are uh, six uh, material that usually use uh, mm -hmm. there are paraffin. Micro Sorry, I mean, uh, how can you conclude? Okay, finally, I, I, uh, the batik was wax must use paraffin, mm -hmm. microwax, colophonium mm -hmm. resins, and so on. And uh, how can the percentage or, or the proportion of each raw materials mm -hmm. was yeah. obtained? Huh. How uh, you did design uh, the experiment? Uh, we use uh, method Taguchi method and uh -huh. gray relational analysis. From Taguchi method, we can get nine formulas, uh -huh. and from the nine formulas, we uh, we have to respond experiment line width and uh -huh. uh, wax penetration. Line width is represented by standard deviation of lines, and wax penetration is the delta between uh, top surface and uh, bottom surface. So the objective function is to minimize the standard uh, deviation of top, top surface. And then we uh, we did uh, nine experiments based on the Taguchi method and based on uh, two response experiment. After that, we get the formula that okay. and then we compare the quality, uh, the recycled wax with the new wax based on batik quality criteria. So um, about the quality, how mm. did you how did you compare the quality obtained from this batik uh, wax and uh, the com this combination and the new? Uh, we compare what? based on uh, expert judgment. Mm. There are eight um, quality criteria. Uh -huh. There are line width, line continuity, line uh, wax, uh, wax penetration, uh -huh. and etc. So uh, is it subjectively? Uh, judged by the expert yes, or is there any 
quantitative parameters that you use for this experiment? Uh, it's uh, subjectively by Only qualitative. Subjective. Okay. Oh. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for Mr. Dodi for the presentation. And once again, give applause to all finalists for this competition. We appreciate your enthusiasm and cooperation. Now we are entering to the break time. The judges will discuss and scoring to determine the winner. The committee will give you snack and drink. You are given 50 minutes for freezing up. We are going to start again the next session at 9.45 p.m. Thank you very much.
对，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边看，这边